Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Thank you for joining me in today's Excel video. Also part of my watch Chris work. I'm going to take an accounts payable or an accounts receivable. So we have an accounting exercise to do. An MBA actually asked me this question one time. So I'm going to run through here. I'm going to do a lot of Excel functions, including the today function, average if. I'm going to use the text function. I'm also doing conditional formatting, and I'm even going to write an if statement. So there's a lot going on in this video. There will be chapters down below. So let's go ahead and dive in. Also, feel free to subscribe. Ring the bell if you like these type of videos. So I'm going to zoom in just a tad before we start. Probably should have done it before I started, but it's all right. Okay. I'm in cell B4 and I want to know what is the current date. The keyboard shortcut to put in the current date is control semicolon. Today is Saturday, May 7th, 2022. But the problem with control semicolon or just typing that day is it's static. It doesn't change until I change it. Well, this is an accounting exercise, so I'm going to use the today function equals today open parent. There is no arguments. I'm going to do control enter. There is the today function. If you look above column B, that is the formula bar. Tomorrow, if I open this, it'll say May 8th. If I open it on Monday, it'll say May 9th. So there you go. So there's the today function. So my current date's always updated. By the way, accounts payable or accounts receivable. Accounts receivable for your company, in case you're wondering, that is money that is owed to your company from your clients or customers, accounts payable, that is money that your company owes to vendors. So this could be used for either one. Not a big deal over here, what well, could be. The invoice date in column A, if you notice, I highlighted them all. Again, this is just a cool tip and trick. Notice it says count seven, and I've got even numerical count seven, average sum. That's telling me that these invoice numbers are actually numbers. They need to be text. So let's say that I pulled these out of some system and they came in as numbers. So I'm over in H7 to do this. And I want to say, I want to make A7 text. The text function has two arguments. What cell are you trying to format and how do you want to format it? I'm putting the word general in double quotes, control enter, crosshairs, Pull down to row 13. I think that works. Perfect. Look down below in the bottom right on the status bar. Because this is text and not numbers, it just says the word count. I'm going to copy. And this is going to be a paste values. Perfect. The green triangle marks basically says, hey, this looks like numbers, but you have it in here as text. And again, I'm still at seven. I no longer need what's in H, but I do want to show you this cool trick. I'm going to undo control Z and I'm back here. So I have numbers back in a, I am making this up. Uh, if you look at that first number, it's got six numbers in it. In case you're wondering how I know that the L E N function will tell you how many characters are in a text string and there's seven or some, sorry, there's six. I'm making this up. Act like all our numbers are supposed to be nine digits and the leading zeros got left out. Well, I can still use the text function. It's the same thing I just did. Quotes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is already in there. There you go. Crosshairs, double click, copy, paste values. I'm just showing you a couple tricks in here. I have to, I've had to use this before, especially in the counting field. A lot of GL account numbers will be X number of characters and the leading zeros get dropped some reason. One more quick trick, just I mean, one more quick test for me. I just want to make sure I got it at nine. They are, they should all be nine. That's what's cool about the nine zeros that I put in on that text function. They're all nine because they had different links. Perfect. Here we go. The invoice date, nothing fancy here. The invoice date is just the invoice date. They're typed in here. Another tip here. This drives me crazy when I'm looking at this. 
Dates and numbers will always be aligned to the right. So if you look in column B, those dates are to the right. Text is always by default aligned to the left. I could, since they're all three letters in here, but in real life, your customers aren't all three letters. I could put them in the center in this example, but let's be realistic. They're not all going to be three letters. So select them. In the alignment group, Right up here is increase indent. It is totally up to you how many times you're gonna do this. I'm gonna click it once. I'm gonna click it a second time, a third time. I'm gonna go back to decrease indent. That looks good. Now, if you notice, I do have a little bit of space between the dates and the numbers, but the text for customer name is still aligned to the left. Keep on going, this is really simple. Highlight these numbers and there is the comma style. If you're a keyboard person though, control shift one and control shift and the number four, the number four if you notice has a dollar sign on it and that made it currency style. So comma, accounting, accounting, the dollar symbols to the far left, currency style from this drop down currency is right next to the number. Up to you what you wanna see. I'm just gonna leave it just the way it is right here. Here we go with some formulas. I wanna know what's the invoice due date. I am making this example up. You take the invoice date and our terms are net 30 for our customers or vendors. So I'm gonna do equals B7 plus 30, control enter, leaves you here. Crosshairs and double click. So there is the invoice due date. 30 days from the invoice date. What is the age of the invoice? Here we go. Here comes an absolute reference. I'm in cell F7. It's going to be equals the current date, whatever that date is. But that current date, I need to use in every one of my calculations. F7, F8, F9 as I'm working down. I want to free cell B4. So equals B4. The F4 function key on your keyboard will put in the dollar sign. That means freeze B4 minus B7. Perfect. Control enter. 36 days. Crosshairs. Double click. I'm going to click on the 66. Look up in my formula bar right above column B. And it still equals B4. Just to point this out, if you just arrow down, you're good. Here we go with some cool stuff. I wanna know the number of days overdue. We just decided that our terms are net 30. So that first invoice is six days overdue. Equals F7 minus 30, control enter, crosshairs and double click, and there you go. Why do I have negative days? Because they're not over 30 days. So three minus 30 is negative 27. Cool feature here. I want to know what is the average number of days overdue. In cell G15 equals average, open parent, highlight this range. Don't have to close it, just press enter. And I tell someone it's 12. That is incorrect. Well, it's correct that it's the average of those numbers, but I only want to know what is the average number of days overdue if they're over 30 days. So I'm going to leave the 12 there. Here is your average if function. I'm not covering it today, but in Excel, average if, some if is available, count if, max if, min if. So average if, I use this a lot. Open parent, three arguments. Two are required. The first two, notice the third one has got the brackets. It's optional. I only need two for this one. I want to know what range, if this range right here, comma, I'm on the criteria argument. I want to average the numbers if they're greater than zero. So there is equals average if your range comma in double quotes is the number zero. Third argument is not required. Press enter. 35 days, cool tip in Excel. 
I'm going to highlight these. You know, the status bar is in the bottom right, and there's the word average showing the number 12. I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard, and I am selecting every number that's a negative. Let go of the control key, look down at the bottom, and notice the average is 35. So you can use the control key to select. You can also use the control key to unselect cells, and I just did. So that is the correct number right there. By the way, since I'm showing you how I work, if someone asks me, what is the average number of days overdue, I'm picking this company up, ABC, because I didn't use the third argument. You know, I love formula text. I never used that third argument when I got the number 35. So what is the average number of days overdue for ABC company equals average if, open parent, what range are you looking for? I'm looking for the company ABC, comma, I am going to use the third argument here. What does you want to average? So for ABC, 24, again, let's just do a quick test. There is six. I know that. I know I did pick up the negatives this time. So there was 24. All right. Um, the age of the invoice. So remember, our terms are net 30. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to do quickly three conditional formattings. So if an invoice, so remember, we're, let's say that uh, this is accounts receivable and we're wanting money from our clients in 30 days. So the minute it hits 31, it's overdue. So between 31 and 40, I want to see in one color. Between 41 and 50, I want to see in another color, and over 51 in a third color. So I got them highlighted. I'll do it again, highlighted. Conditional formatting on the Home tab. This is really simple. Highlight cell rules between. When you put in between, it wants that box. I do 31 and 40. What color? Well, 31 days I don't get too worried about, and 35 maybe. I'm going to put them in green. Hit OK. So I only got one in green. Leave them highlighted. Come right back here and do another between. We did 31 and 40, so 41 and 50. I'm going to put those in yellow. Leave them highlighted. Come right back in here do the last one. 31 to 40, 41 to 50. Over 50, so greater than 50. I'm going to let it be this red color right here. There you go. Real quick test. Change this one here, the age of the invoice, to 318.22. There you go. It's right at 50. Let's say it's 319.22. It's 49. And it's 321. And sorry, I went the wrong way. <laughs> It's working, I promise you. There you go. One more cool tip and then we are done. If you want to see your conditional formatting rules, highlight what you just did. Conditional formatting, go to manage rules. This box appears. Notice it says current selection. You could look at all the conditional formatting for the entire worksheet. Also, a new feature, you used to not better do this. You can resize this box if you have a lot of rules. You used to not better do that. That is all I have for you today. Uh, I will put this file up on my website, chrismenardtraining.com. You can go, I'll do a blog post about it, and you can always go find this file and download it. I'll have this worksheet the way I had it when I started. I hope you enjoyed this. I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank you.